Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K Now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Edmond, your host for the next two hours, along with Spence. Good morning. Good morning. And Mike is here. Good morning. Good morning. Our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And this morning's show is being brought to you by Adamus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. And the broadcast is made possible by Telestream's Wirecast software. So, another week went by. I missed it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. It's almost like missing it. But, yeah, uh, you don't know when you miss it. <laughs> you know when you miss it. Yeah, it's pretty hard not to to know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't pay attention. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah. Um, what's, what's going on? I I woke up uh, real early this morning, at quarter or five. To let the, to let to let the dog out, and I always go and watch on the surveillance surveillance cameras to see where he is, so I can let him back in. But I was watching the big. Uh, no, I was I was sitting there, and as I sat, I'm looking at my machine, and it's a blue screen. I'm saying, "Oh, great!" And it says that it's preparing the the. The disk for dump, uh, but never never got to that, and it wasn't running. So I turned it off. I rebooted, and it told me that uh, something changed in the BIOS to F1 to save. So, and I'm reading, and I'm doing. I'm not seeing. It. I said okay, and it came up, and things are working. I said, okay. And then I'm looking, and it started to do a backup and said, target not available. So I said, okay, this is going to the E drive, that ex external SATA drive. And I'm looking at the drive under the desk, and the light is not on. I said, okay, something died there. It must be the power supply. Pulled it out. Sure enough, there is no, no light on the power supply. And it's built into a uh, an older U external USB drive box that all I did is I, I'm using the power from it. And I made a hole in the back and stuck the SATA drive, uh, cable through it because it was IDE. So I opened it up. That's checking, and sure enough, there's no voltage. Um, it was weird because I said, oh, shoot, now I'm going to have to get another case and all that. Well, and I said, wait, I've got another one. So I went, sure enough, I had another one. I took the power supply, put it on. The power supply came on, turned it on, listening to the drive. The drive's going click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. I said, that's, okay. a, that's a feature, by the way. Yeah. That's the click feature. So I said, okay, well, the drive is gone. But before, I mean, the power is there. Why? So I said, let me try another drive just for the heck of it. Plugged another drive. You didn't, you didn't get one of those low click drives? No, it was a uh, loud click. Okay. Yeah. You got the wrong one. <laughs> High click, yeah. <laughs> so plugged in another drive. It did the same thing, and I know that drive is good. I said, oh, okay, so there's something wrong with the board because I did not use the other box. Tried the other box, did the same thing. Click, 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 click. I say, well, something is wrong. Let's, let's try, and I had a different one. Took it out, put it in, everything works. Check the drive, drive works okay. So hmm. I put it together. And put it the way that I have it arranged. It's on top of my, uh, on top of the tower 
under the desk. I'm, I'm just putting stuff together on the desk and moving the, the tower back where it belongs. And a couple of minutes later, blue screen. I said, oh, come on. The power connector from that box came off. And it was it really it fell out. It, it fell out. It was real kind of. It it went in real easy and came out real easy. So I squeezed it a little bit and play. it's one of those round connectors like the the PS2 connectors, right? And I squeezed it a little bit. It was better. So I said, okay. So I took it, folded it back, got the electric tape, put it so it's attached to the chi to the case, so it can't fall out. Period. And put it. Is this a, is this enclosure a Mad Dog enclosure? Yeah. I have several of those. Yeah. So you need to weld it. <laughs> no, and 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 the thing is, I couldn't. I I. I mean, here it is, early in the morning, and I don't want to go in the garage and drill the back plate. So I left the back plate off, and just put tape, so it will not slide out. Because I mean, nobody touches the drive, and it's working fine. But it's really interesting that one power supply did not even light up. The second power supply lit up and just clicked. And I, I mean, I haven't used that case in I don't know how long. And it had a 500 gig drive in there, so it was fine. Um, so it's 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 really it's it's really uh, nice that. Something like this could have been fixed like that. I didn't plan on it. I planned to get up, let the dog out, go back in bed, but stayed up. So one of them things. People say that you're best in the early morning hours. Um, yeah, it seems like I've been up now for half the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you have been. Uh, that's true. All right, let's see. People say I should notify. I already did, but you can too. Is is who? Who did you notify? Is is I just you? me? Not as Nissan, yeah. Okay. No. Chash, um, I mean, Blab sure is okay. dead this morning. Yeah, I know. And I was talking with uh, Steve and Marty the other night. Steve, hey. Yeah, they're done. Yeah. I told Steve, though, he shouldn't be done. He should just do it. Take advantage of it. Take, use it when you're on. And just like us, I mean, you don't pay much attention to it. People want to. I actually told him the trick to do is to be there and kill the audio. If anybody wants to watch the show, they need to come to the website to do it. But he has no way of doing that. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into a big blab discussion because they, they're doing something. But I guess since we're on the topic, finish it up. They need to, they're in the process of either taking a big step ahead or killing themselves. I'm not sure which one it is. I, I, I think I know. I sure hope that it's a step ahead. Well, I mean, uh, why, again, the, the problem we complain about Blab is they've taken all their discoverability. Right. The, the benefit of Blab, when you could go there, when it first started, we're talking about, if you don't know it, which I can't even how, know how that would be, but there's a site called Blab.im that is a an open forum that you can go in and watch other people talking among themselves, or if you you can participate, if the host will let you in. And it, it caught on and did really well and it's surprising people because they said, well, what's different about this with Google Hangouts or, or appear.in or any of the others? Why is it that Blab is catching on? And from what I was able to determine and decide, it's because anyone could go to the site. The, uh, as soon as you get there, there's a menu about what all's going on, what interest you click on it. Boom, you're in the middle of a conversation. Right. Uh, it was great. It was nice. It, it worked well. Well. 
the powers that be decided to get rid of the landing page. Now, when you go there, you can only see who's live based on whom you may have already followed. And if, if you didn't follow a bunch of people before they changed it, how do you find people to follow? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a trick. You can go into the search window and type a comma B comma C comma D comma all the way through the alphabet. And it'll bring up every lie, every blab listed down at the bottom of the page. And you can go through and see who's live at the moment. I'm not going to bother. No, I mean, it's ridiculous to have to go through any kind of extra steps. And what if you don't know the alphabet? What if, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, we got these Bernie Sanders, never mind. But the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the I, so I, I don't understand. They, they were supposedly, and they, they've interacted with me privately and so forth. And oh, it's still beta. And we're still working on it. But you know what? They're doing what they're doing. And I guess Walter would agree with this. Walter's a blab expert. But whatever they're doing now is very deliberate. They're not sitting there saying, oh, wait a minute. What happens if I push this button? They're, they're doing what they're doing deliberately. And so I can only assume that what they're doing is what they want to do. And what they want to do doesn't align with what I think needs to be done to make it useful. So I just, I, I tuned into Dave Jackson's thing yesterday and he had a good crowd, but he promotes externally. Right. He, he posts a link and you can click on that link and it'll take you to the right place. But, um, here, I don't know. I mean, we've got six people. We normally have at least 12 about this point. Yep. So, uh, so I, and, and, and Walter said it's been dead all weekend. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, it's, it's just another, just another platform. What they're going to do mean, is the, the, that's the whole idea about it. And what, what's, what doesn't work is new people coming in. They don't follow anybody. They're new. new they don't follow. They don't know to do ABCD, whatever they coming in and they see two and a half blabs. And I say, oh, nothing is going on here. And they keep going. They never come back because they say, I don't understand what this site is about. That's, that's, enough, that's what they screwed up, like you said, the discoverability. But, but Amnon, we say that they are screwed up. These, these are not stupid people. No, I'm not. I'm, I'll be the last these, one to say that they're the, stupid. These are self-made multimillionaires who got there by knowing what they were doing and knowing how to read the tea leaves. That's why in, in certain respects, the reason I haven't completely eliminated the, the button on my computer to go to blab is because I'm saying to myself, these people, they, they're, they're setting the pace. They're, they're defining the future here and we need to see what they're going to do. And so far I haven't seen it. Well, maybe something will happen. I mean, maybe, only, they, need, maybe they need a write-off. So they're, that's a fallacy. That's just never I, true. I, I know it's just, I'm thinking that, uh, I mean, why would you spend a million dollars so that you can write 250,000 off your taxes? I didn't say it was smart. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like home mortgage interest. Well, at least you get to deduct the interest, yeah, right? That's, you, yeah. That's, you uh, pay $10,000 in interest and you get to take 2,500 off your taxes. I'm ready yeah. for that explanation. Yeah. Well, that's the myth that, uh, has been put out there. So anyway, we'll see. We, uh, it, it, we'll see what happens. I suspect that there, I agree with Walter. There's a, at least a 50, 50 chance they'll shoot themselves in the foot. So, uh, I sure hope that that's not what they're going to be doing. Well, the problem, I, Andrew nailed it and I agree with it and I'm trying not to, to be ugly about it, but it's just us here. Uh, the reason they're not posting the number of live viewers is they don't want people to see how many few, how few people are doing it. Well, that's possible, but by the same token, I mean, here I'm hearing again and again that they don't want, they, they're going to shut down those that are doing 24 seven. It's I mean, kind of like setting up a, a retail store to sell, I don't know, Apple computers and you lock the door so nobody can come in and see how few customers you have. Yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I'm not going to go there <laughs> or surface pro store or whatever it's just it's just uh it, it is ridiculous but i mean here there are there are people on blab right now and they're enjoying it L let them enjoy it now they will. 
we can't let there. we can't let people jump in any seat because it's not going to work right with the audio anyway. Yeah. So you cannot you cannot interact in except in chat. Now you can type except, in chat. Yeah, We're monitoring chat. chat. That's right. And, and, and Tech Junk is asking the, the, about a new microphone he bought an AKG P four twenty. AKG makes a bunch of of microphones in that same form factor and with varying degrees of, uh, uh, of, I guess it would be quality in terms of what they're shooting for. I mean, I, I hate dogging on people's microphones, but there's really nothing special about it. It's in the same as the P220 family. Andrew has one. It's defective. I mean, for what you're getting for a, a condenser microphone, it's fine. And, um, uh, so, I mean, if it does what you want it to do, then, then, then that's a good thing. Uh, most, most broadcasters and podcasters prefer to use dynamic microphones because the condenser microphones are very sensitive and they'll pick up a lot of unwanted noise in your home studio. But if you're not having a problem with that, then go for it. It's uh, AK. I love AKG products. I've got quite a few of them. So Walter says they gauge blab by hours spent on blab instead of how many people use it. You think that smoke and mirrors? I mean, that sounds kind of like newspapers. They, uh, <clears throat> we gauge our readership by how many people, how many people in the home read the same newspaper instead of how many newspapers we sell. And by our calculations, uh, four people read every newspaper. So even though our circulation is only 10,000, we're going to call it 40 because four people read every newspaper, right? We subscribed to newspapers for years and used them primarily as fire starters. We didn't even open them, so we finally canceled it. I, I want to ask the people on Blab something. Why are you staying on Blab and not going to the Computers 2K Now website? I mean, what is the reason? It, I, it can't be loyalty. I mean, are you, are you the what? Probably just convenience. Yeah, but I mean, what, what do you have to do? I mean, all you have to do is click on a, on a link and you're there and the same thing. Unless you're jumping back and forth between blabs, which makes sense. Some people, you know, they want to watch this, but there's also something else going on. I don't know. Uh, tech junk. I mean, why aren't you on... on well, Walter just answered because Blab has its audience. No, and yeah, no, no, but it's okay. But again, Walter is there to participate in the show. No, I'm not talking about Walter, but Walter's comment is correct. Yeah, His comment it, is that it's the community. It's, and what it is, is that there are certain people who will drop into Blab who are not interested. They're, they're Blab hopping. They're not going to come over to computers2know.com. And if you want to interact with them, you need to be on Blab. Same I, reason that, that I'm in, logged in, you're logged in. It's a big deal. Six, one, half a dozen or the other. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing was that we were talking, Stephen and, and Marty and I, is that we'll just have Blab running there for the convenience of these people, but not participate, not put any effort into it until they fix it but at least give those people a, a place to go to. And hence was the, the idea about cutting the audio out. So if you want to hear it, you have to come over here. And nah. I want to understand what keeps people there. Okay, so he says, I'm both chatting in Blab and watching on the C2K yeah. feed. But again, it's, it's a, it's a kind of catch-22. If everybody that is permanently now on Blab watching us if they went into computers 2k now yeah the blab will be empty but it'll be the same discussion going on so i i don't know it, it maybe one of these days we'll figure it out who cares yeah alan's asking whether the show is streamable through chromecast i i, I don't use chromecast so i'm not no, sure I mean, chromecast yeah you can do you can do that locally chrome remember Chromecast is not it's not like a, a Apple TV that you go and you find shows. Chromecast, the one that we have anyway, you have to bring it up on uh, on your tablet, 
or on your phone and then cast it to your TV. So it shouldn't care. It should be content right. agnostic, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it makes no as If you can watch the show, if you go to computers2k9.com on your phone or on your tablet, it should bring up the mobile site. The mobile site is the, the video on top and the chat on the bottom, and that's all you get there. And once you're there, you can go into the uh, cast. You can click on your cast icon and say, I want to cast it, and it will appear on your TV. Right, and you can do certain tabs. Absolutely. Hmm. <clears throat> Dr. John says, it seems to me that chat gets more attention from the host here than on C2K talking about Blab. And that's because I there's know. more interaction on Blab than there is on C2K. I know. And that's what I want to kill. Yeah. It's hard to, to do it, Blab. but. Yeah, but you're not, that's the audience that's on Blab. They're, they're out there exploring, whereas they have to know about us to find us. Yeah. But that's the lab has this used to have, and probably I think they will again one of these days have discoverability that you don't get when you do your own website unless you pump it in social media, which you yep. don't. Yep. So, anyway, on to more important things. On to more important things. I went to the ham fest yesterday. Okay, tell us about it. What tell, a while, junk while, while, huh? What a junkyard. I'm, I'm going to go in and do the uh, upload the special so you. You and, you and Spence can talk about drawers. I mean, about the, the uh, ham, ham fest. fest. Junkyard, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was just a bunch of junk, a bunch of garbage. I went over there looking for one particular thing and walked through everything in it. We weren't able to get there. It, it goes from 8 in the morning until 3.30, according to the website. We get there, and it actually they're quitting at 3 o'clock. We didn't get there to 1 o'clock. Full price admission to get in even at 1 o'clock. We walk in and by the time we get to the third booth, we can see people in the back of the, the facility already packing their stuff up to leave. Where was it? At Jim Graham building at the fairgrounds. Have well, you that's, been? Yeah, that's not good that they they leave early. That's always annoying. Well, I asked the guy about it. I said, do you have rules prohibiting your vendors from leaving early? Well, it's really hard to get vendors here. We really can't dog on them. We can't make any kind of rule. I'm sitting there saying, okay, thanks. So they let people do what they want to do. But I mean, years gone by, if I guess it's interesting, it's kind of a sign of the times, but the, back in the old days, if you were into building things at the component level, you could go in there and find resistors, capacitors, transistors, ICs, all sorts of hardware, everything you needed. You could walk out of there with a, an entire kit of parts to go build something. Shoot. It was nothing but RF connectors, coaxial cable. Uh, junk that people haul from flea market to flea market. Um, I did run into one of my buddies there who had a booth. And I mean, this guy is a consummate uh, uh, wheeler dealer. And he said he sold about $3,000 worth of stuff. And I told him, I said, I didn't realize you were into him. I'm not. That's why I'm selling the stuff. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, he. He was happy with it, but for the most part, there are people standing around talking to each other and, and the junk they had on the table. I just don't see any reason for it. <clears throat> we spent about 30 bucks. <clears throat> we did find some nice little Exolite di uh, wire cutters, diagonal cutters, little small ones. And they were about 10, 10 bucks a pair. And if you, if you buy them commercially, it's much more expensive than that. And. Fortunately, I know how to look at them to tell the good ones from the bad ones. So I would yeah, say about 75% of them are really good. Yeah. The good flush cut ones are like you say, hard to find. But what I went over there looking for, believe it or not, I, I, where are my scissors? I went, what I went over there looking for, I walked in and I always start at one edge and go at one end and go to the other. I couldn't find, I looked and looked, went, walked through every booth in there that anybody was still there and didn't find them. So then my wife was doing something with Skywarn. I had some time to kill. I started back at the beginning, went through it again and found what I was looking for at the first booth I went to. 
what these are, if you can see them, there's yeah. little solder, solder strips. You, yeah. you put a screw in these to tack them down to the, to the component chassis. And then you can screw components, not screw solder components to each of these four tabs. So for example, if you're going to replace electrolytic capacitors in a guitar amplifier, which is sometimes what I do, you can mount the, and they don't fit. You can't get the can caps on some sizes anymore. So you have to use axial discrete caps or, or you can use radial. And what you do is you mount two of these apart and then you can put the capacitors between them and wire to them. And they're perfectly, I mean, this is the way they used to make tube amplifiers, but these things, what last time I needed some of them, I went on to eBay and ended up paying like a buck a piece for these little strips. I mean, they used to, we used to throw them in a trash can. We had so many of them. Now they're like a buck a piece, but this guy had, had uh, little packages of them for two bucks. So I got, I got three packages of them that'll last longer than I will. I went to see something that was very low tech, but still fascinating yesterday. It was a, uh, Cedar Creek Gallery up in Creedmoor is having their annual craft fest, and they do pottery and glass blowing. Did you did you just say crap fest? Crap fest? No, no, <laughs> craft fest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a it's a nice place to visit on its own. It's got you know you can go in and buy stuff, but mainly they were they they're set up to do some really cutting edge glass work that I I had never seen anything like this before. I've been to glass places where they do, like in uh, it, what is it, uh, Jamestown and we the Williams in part of, in Virginia, Jamestown is part of the Colonial Williamsburg region. There has a uh, an old glass blowing place that's modeled after what existed back there during in the colonial days. It was nothing like this. This was a just out there bleeding edge art, really fancy art. And just watch people doing these incredible things with molten glass. The only thing high tech about it was the people taking video of it. <laughs> You're welcome, Dr. John. <laughs> I, I'm going to try. <clears throat> Had an interesting thing happen yesterday on Facebook. Um, one of my buddies is a uh, is a famous singer known around the world by his voice, not by his name. He was posting that he was having a problem with Linux. Well, unfortunately, Jason popped in and said something to me, sort of unrelated or made some snarky comment about Linux, like he normally does. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I, uh, I went in and posted, I said to this guy, I said, wait a minute, Jason's here. Jason's a Linux expert. He can help you. And I, I sort of left it at that. And then I private messaged Jason. I said, do you know who this guy is? And he said, no. And so I told him who he was and he said, wow, I was a big fan of that song. That was great. We used to play that all the time. I said, would you mind helping him with Linux? He said, no, I'd love to talk with him. So I connected them up, but they haven't talked yet. So. Which, um, reminds me, did you connect with the uh, Howard? No, and I'm glad okay. you said that because I'd forgotten about it. And so when you oh. talk with him, tell him that was not intentional. I have had another week from hell. Okay, okay, it's fine. No, I just tell him I'll, I'll be glad to help him. But I, 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 I would think that it's something real basic and simple because I. Well, it always is. It's nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three computers two K voice on Skype. So let's see what we have here. Um, we're talking about scams and all that. Listen to this. I mean, this is, in my opinion, this is irresponsible. Mattel, popular toy maker behind Barbie and Hot Wheels, was the victim of a phishing attack last year that nearly cost them $3 million. On April 30th, 2015, a Mattel finance executive got a note from the new CEO, Christopher Sinclair, requesting a new vendor payment to China. Transfers required approval from two high-ranking managers. The finance exec qualified, and so did the CEO. The transfer was made. 
The only thing preventing a total loss was the fact that the following day was a bank holiday. And detail of the attack against Mattel come from a report by the Associated Press. Somebody in China, a phishing thing, said, we expect the payment. The CEO gets that email or, or that request and doesn't even check. What are we writing $3 million to a Chinese out, outfit here for? I'm sure they're writing checks to Chinese outfits because they have that stuff made there. But you are writing checks? Makes me want to send him an email and say, can you write me a check for a million dollars? I mean, this is irresponsible. This is like you getting something and you say, hey, I'm waiting for your payment of $3 million. And say, oh, yeah, here, here's the, here's the transfer. Take it. Here's the explanation. You know what it, you know what it means to live in a bubble? It, it's, it's just amazing. And these are the people that are making millions of dollars, right? Through no fault of their own. Yeah. Yeah, despite their best efforts. Unfreaking believable. To just say, yeah, go ahead, uh, CTO, you know, write the check. I authorize. Unless maybe he, he had something to do with it. It's possible, right? Uh, maybe he's getting a kickback. <laughs> That's true. He might have been over there negotiating deals, and somebody took him aside and said, hey, we've got something we want, you to, we want to talk to you about. That's a pretty yeah. good deal. What do you think? That's possible. Now, I had a very interesting experience this week with a new computer. Oh, yes. Yeah, you need, yeah, you need to talk yeah. about this. And I read afterwards, after we talked, Spence, I read, and yeah, it's all over the place. So yeah. what happened is a customer asked for a new computer, uh, the fastest thing they can get. So I got uh, I got a um, an i7 and from where uh, from Draymond. Okay. Unbeknown to me, even though on the invoice it says that it's a 4790 Pentium, I mean a, a i7, it was actually a 6700, which I noticed after the fact, after all the problems. And I, first I said. Why are they giving me an older one? They're, oh, no. I said, no, that's the newer one. Yeah, 40, 67 is higher than 47. Yeah. So I called them and I said, guys, did you mean to give me this one? Yes, we ran out of, 40, of 4970. We don't, 4790, we don't carry them anymore. The problem is, I inst uh, the, and the guy needed Windows 7, which he had, because he had programs that would only run on 7 unless he's, spending thousands and thousands said oh, no problem just let me have that and let me have your key and it'll be fine installed it it didn't want to take it so yeah, the, the, i mean the it's brand, when the I brand say, name of this was skylane by the yeah, way the skylake yeah. is the, skylake. the cpu skylake what? chip skylake chip yeah so skylake skylake lake the, 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 the 6700 is skylake like okay. like like haswell like haswell Okay. Um, it it went to a certain point and stopped. It should, I'm not. Stopped. It should have been called the up yours chip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I reinstalled the operating system with changing the, the the BIOS a few times, and finally it went all the way. At that point, USB did not work. I said, never mind, let's do updates. I'm doing the updates, and it's just going and going, and nothing is happening. Not even for the first one. So I, after about two hours that it was sitting there on the very first update, I said, okay, let's do it again. And I reinstalled it again. And went in, and at first I went in and changed the uh, UEFI to standard and all that. It went, USB doesn't work. I went and got the, the uh, USB 
on on the driver CD there was USB three drivers. So I installed that, and sure enough, at that point, it's seeing USB three root hub. But that's about it. And of course, you stick USB in, it doesn't see it. I don't know. Out of nowhere, suddenly it started working. So I said, okay, it's working now because I'm doing some other stuff at the same time. Um, let's do the updates. It did the updates. It took forever and overnight and all that, but it finished. And then I said, okay, I'm ready to take it back. And I'm looking at the uh, sys tray and the speaker has an X on it. So I'm saying, oh, it's because I don't have a speaker plugged in probably. Well, no. That means the device doesn't work. Because I plug a, a, a speaker in, doesn't do anything. So I go into the CD again, the DVD, and install the audio drivers. Plug a speaker in. It says, oh, you plugged, you just plugged in the speaker. Where is it? Front, rear? Then uh, front. Thank you. But it doesn't work. Went into the sound settings, tried to see nothing. Now I'm getting pissed. So I called Draymond, and Sai answered the phone, Mike. And I said, Sai, what is that piece of crap that you, that you sold me that I'm having a problem all over the place? He said, what, what? What's the problem? I said, I can't install an operating system on it. It doesn't work. I said, you're putting Windows 7. I said, yeah. He said, I'm not. Relax. This is a problem with the Skylake and, and Microsoft. I said, what do you mean? He said, they make it so you can't use Windows 7 on the newer CPUs. He said, but bring it over here, and Pete will image it because he's got an image with all the tweaks that will make it work just fine. I said, okay. Went over there. Pete put it on the bench. Put uh, the same version of uh, Win, um, Windows 7 um, Pro. Everything works like a charm. So we, we hung around there and we were talking about it. And w what turns out is Microsoft, and you guys can go and read about it now. Because it is, I, I, ne I never thought about that. I remember the story a few weeks ago that said that Microsoft and Intel, uh, Intel is building the new chips, and Microsoft said that on future uh, CPUs, Windows 7 will not run. Well, this is the first one of those future CPU generation. It's generation six. And apparently, everybody's having a problem with that chip, putting Windows 7 on it. And guess what? It's not just uh, Intel. Uh, no, it's AMD, AMD is also yeah, committed. AMD, so. Right. It's yep, Microsoft. They, they, it's Microsoft. If Microsoft, Microsoft wants to make it work, they can make it work. Obviously, if Pete can make it work, Microsoft can make it work. Well, I I did reading on this, and yeah. the problem is not so much that Microsoft said they're going to do this; it's the way they did it. Again. Yeah, it kind of. They kind of, in a snarky, disingenuous way, they come. Here's their statement: We're focused on our commitment to deliver security, reliability, and compatibility to our installed base on the, their current systems. Redesigning Windows Seven subsystems to embrace new generations of silicone would introduce churn in the Windows Seven code base, which would break this commitment. In other right. words, we don't want to make anything compatible with new. Right. So. That's their excuse. But in reality, what are they doing? They're forcing people. I see why they're going there. But, geez, let's don't be honest with us. Right. You know? um, tell us why it's if it's really for better embedded security and you're trying to fix things that were wrong with old code. Tell us that. And it's not only that. It's also Windows 8, 8.1 8. that 8. would have yes. a problem. Windows 8 so, is also affected. Yep. Yeah. So if you bought a computer before Windows 10 was actually released. 
I mean, you just got that operating system and you want to reinstall it or whatever, and you happen to have Skylake in there. You can't do it. Not without not without having the yeah. proper tweaks. And, and yeah. this is this is so underhanded. This is so bad. Well, I mean Andrew's taking exception to what you're saying. I know. He, I know, and I understand. I I have no problem with them doing this as long as they present it the right way. It's the fact that it's hitting people now like you. Uh you know, I understand why they're doing it. Microsoft has always had a lot of holes in the operating systems that were brought forward. We found out that there were faults that were around since the um, <coughs> early days of Windows that were carried forward in generation after generation of operating systems right. that they finally fixed. So good that they're doing it, but at the same time, you know, be they, upfront about it. Don't they, don't this along with the the publicity about the Windows 10 upgrades and and what's happening there, it's not helping them. What Andrew is saying, I believe Andrew, since you're not in, in the hangout, um, is he's, he's, I believe saying that the problem you were running into Amnon is that the drivers that Windows 10 on uh, Windows 7 supplied for that motherboard were not, uh, were not the correct drivers that apparently, are you saying that the motherboard drivers were not written for windows seven they're only written for windows 10. baloney i'm asking me, if that's no, what he's saying there's I, no i don't know he may be question. saying it but let me tell you something when pete imaged that drive all the drivers that are working are the windows drivers not the asus drivers i, I so i asked him after i said so Pete, do I need to put the CD and in, and install all the other drivers that came with? They said no. Let the Windows Seven the drivers work. Everything is working perfectly. So the Windows Seven drivers that come with Windows Seven, when like you know how you always install Windows Seven and things work right off the bat. You don't need you don't really need to put the drivers that came on the CD most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Well, this is how this one worked. So the drivers that are on Windows 10, I mean on Windows 7, are addressing and being used by that motherboard with no problems. There were other tweaks that he couldn't even remember what he did. He said that there were things that he did in the registry. And all the information is on the Internet how to do it. The problem is getting it all together and figure it out. And I don't think anybody done this. But he did it apparently they, they, because they are doing those computers all the time. So if Microsoft's excuse is that they're trying to bring forward new security features going forward that won't be supported by older hardware, how, how could you get it to work? If that's why they're doing it. There, if, there's way, if there's a way around it, then it's not working. Well, the thing is that there is a way around it, and if you, uh, because that's what happened here, it's Pete figured out a way around it, but it's working like it should. I mean, so far, and he says that he's been using that for about a month doing these, and he said hundreds of computers went, went out. He said, if we put Windows 10, it works right off the bat. There's no problem. Never had to think twice. But with Windows 7, if people, and they're still selling Windows 7, he said, when people are asking for Windows 7, that's when we run into problems. So, yes, I mean, and, and Anders saying that you need the chipset drivers, that's the, the one driver that he said that was in there. But it, it all, like the, the video is not from there, and it, can, it went afterwards and updated it from, online the usb is obviously not from the cd and usb 3 worked um i can't remember what what the other drivers were there because it's a essentially a very basic machine the the thing over here is there is a problem with windows 7 installed on a skylake based uh motherboard if the if that motherboard had the 
97, I mean, 4790 or 4770, which is a fifth generation i7, everything would have worked out fine. That's what I have on my machine here on that we're using. I never had a problem installing Windows 7 on it. And never even thought that that 6700 is one of those future chips. And that's where the problem is. And Andrew was saying in the quote that if you buy it uh, in the chat, if you buy a new motherboard, you need to get the drivers from Asus. But the point is that Microsoft went to Asus and said, don't produce drivers for Windows. Yeah. 7. Or that's, my, that's I mean, point. I'm sure they, Asus, they asked them not to do it. Right. And, and Asus is more than happy not to do it. And also keep in mind, as far as this discussion is going, the the guy that's that Amnon talking with, it, th these are wholesalers. These are people who sell hundreds and hundreds of these. Right. And the guy, the tech that solved the problem is a super tech. This guy knows Windows as well as anybody does. So this is not something Amnon just made up. No, I mean, I, I wish that wasn't the situation. Because now, if if I have a customer that's asking for a computer with Windows 7, I'm going to have to make sure that it does not have the Skylake. Well, and, and Brian, that, that's where it sounds like we're are being argumentative here, but we're not. Brian says in chat, he says, the problem is that your customer needs to stop using old operating systems on new hardware. Yeah, right, Pick one. Right. Hang on. So use Windows 10 and new hardware, Windows 7 and old hardware, problem solved. I agree. That's what you did. You went over there to order a system that you knew was Windows 7 compatible, and they gave you one that was well, not Windows no, 7 that, compatible. No, that's in, in, I mean, in, in, to be honest, I did not say that I want to run Windows 7 on it. I understand. So but, they did but, not know. Not until I, I had the problem. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. You went over there to order. You you go to the to the grocery store to buy a gallon of milk. You take it home. You drink it. You don't say, wait a minute, I need to make sure that that this is a certain type of right. milk. You you know what the milk is, you buy the milk. Right. You know, to be fair, Andrew's making a good point is that they have to phase out their old products. I, yes. I understand that. Yes. And I, I've worked for manufacturers that did that. They had to, eventually you have to, uh, things become obsolete. You're only supported to a certain point because you can't just stay involved in keeping things going. But, but you know, but you backwards. know, but you know the other problem I'm having with this kind of policy. Windows 7 is still a current operating system. Yeah, it did not. 20, 2023 updates are going to be available. I mean, so. even if it's 2017, it is still current. It is not an older, I mean, it is older, but it's not old and phased out. They want you to phase it out, but it's still a current operating system. 8.1 is still a current operating system. So to do that, that's, you know, that's like uh, uh, you subscribe to, to a service for a year, and after six months they say, oh, we're phasing it out. You're going to have to subscribe to the new one. Why? So anyway, everything is working okay. I just thought that to save... The, to save the problem to other people that may have that, don't don't blame the hardware there. It's you're having problem with Windows Seven on Skylake. That's that is known. It's a known issue. And I, I was surprised how many articles are out there about this on The Verge and on a bunch of other outlets talking about this. And Brian, I don't think anyone is arguing that. I don't even think any of this was a complaint. If I'm not putting words in Amnon's mouth, the complaint was not knowing about the change. Right. I mean, and and again, they did say future CPUs will not support Windows 7. What you think is that when Windows 7 expires or goes out of run out of support anything that's coming after that that w it will not allow windows 7 to run okay that's fine i mean you know where the funny thing is i'll bet you that xp will run just fine on skylake <laughs> <laughs> 
Why don't you try it, Emron, and let us know. Uh, I may try it on the next computer that's on the bench just for the heck of it. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, uh, Charles made a comment about how Steve Gibson has a, a super Windows 7 uh, load that he uses that will run future proofed. He's still running to his. I mean, this guy's amazing. Yeah. Was, Steve Gibson, he still has NT systems yeah. running that he's patched. He's the one that brought up all these security vulnerabilities in Microsoft and got them to fix all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. But, you know, it's interesting. It just did you go the discussion between difference between Mac and and uh, um, Mac moving over to Intel based. They lock their hardware down. There's only so many versions of hardware, supposedly supported versions that will run on uh, Mac's OS will run on certain hardware. The, the issue you have is there's so many different manufacturers making Microsoft OS supported systems that I understand why Microsoft doesn't want to have to support tens of thousands of iterations, you know, but they, they want to get out of control in the first place because of that was the model, the IBM model. And when uh, the ISA architecture first came out and um, it's just, now they're trying to reel, reel it in and it's gonna be hard, but just tell us. Tell us what right. you're trying I mean, to do. Don't, 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 don't hide don't, that stuff. Not that, not that it's hidden, it's just that, you know, that along with before, like I said, that along with the Windows update, upgrade, Windows 10 situation where the things that slip out and we find out about, it's not flattering to them. So try to, you know, make it, get your publicity people out there saying that, hey, we're doing this to help everybody, not to help us, we're helping everybody. But it just doesn't seem that way. Yeah. So. 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. Call in if, so, you, if you want to participate and talk about this or any all right, other. So um, people are dogging on Microsoft for all of the nagging for upgrading to Windows 10. And my iPhone is getting the same nagging that's even more onerous than the nagging I'm getting from Microsoft every day. It's asking me whether I want to upgrade. What well, is I the always... latest? 9.3? I don't know. Whatever the latest is, but it nags me every day. I have to click on two things to get rid of that. I, I don't install these updates the day they come out anymore. I already got bitten by that one. So <clears throat> remind me once a week is fine, but every day and sometimes twice a day is a little much. Well, it's interesting because I think it's a, this is, this is where you see companies go off into the weeds when it's a delicate balance between bringing out new stuff successfully and moving the market forward, moving technology forward and keeping people happy. So if you lose track of one or the other, you go down. So that's very, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It, it, I worked for years and years and years for communications manufacturers that would try to get people to buy new stuff and you come out with this whole new line of products, new generation of architecture, whole new idea, and nobody buys it because the old stuff just works. Why do I want to spend the money for something I don't need? So you have to come up with a compelling reason why they need to buy it. It's hard. It's really hard. It'll be fine. Right? Yeah, there's so many old Nortel systems out there. Old, you go into storage and you still see Northstar. You still see uh, these old old uh, systems running because they were built like crazy. They just still work. Yeah. It's just that they don't. You can't get updates necessarily. You can't get uh, the support isn't there anymore. But they still work, and they're 25 years old. I don't Some think older. I don't think I've ever had a Nortel piece of hardware to fail. And I'm talking about a Delta Force, which is, I mean, that's the ISP side. So you mean the data, the data products? The data, so. yeah, the data center. I mean, is is full of Nortel stuff. Yeah. And I'm still that, when I try to find something, I'm looking for Nortel. It, like you said, it just works. It works and works and works and works. 
which is nice. I mean, but you you saw what you ran into with IPv6. Yes. And how you had to find, you had to kind of struggle to get something to work that, and and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, that's been, gosh, it's been in, in, in the works now and being implemented over the years and years and years that was since it was first introduced or first Well, I mean, in, in, but but remember, if I wanted to pay a bunch of money, you could have bought the license. I could have That's bought true. the license for IPv6. It was a lot cheaper to buy a used two Cisco, switch. Cisco yeah. uh, switches that have that had IPv6 on them. I mean, it was a fraction of the price to buy the license. That's the only reason. But yeah, I mean, the, the Nortel hardware, hardware, Nortel hardware supported V6. It's just that you needed a premium license. Right. And the Nortel no, brand I mean, the was... Old, but wait a second. That, that old hardware, the switches, the 5520, yep. it will run IPv6 just fine Yeah, it will. if I had the, the license for it. Yep. But that, that all, when Nortel... Oops, you are oh, went away and a Vix they you're in somebody they else sunsetted the, those Spain, somebody, somebody somebody in the house is using the internet big time. Your your nope. uh, your video is kinda deteriorating in your audio too. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse. Looks uh we no. can't understand what you're saying. Try try and Mike, you talk. Okay, what do yeah, you want no, me to say? No, you're fine. Yeah, no, I was afraid that it was on my end. No, you sound fine. Just refresh, Spence. Um, did he freeze? Yeah. So. Either that or his computer's maxing out because he was said he was having a resources issue. Yeah. And Mike, what do you think about what what's the the thing with the FBI and the Apple? Do you have any thoughts about that? I, you know what? It's interesting you bring it up because I don't know what the latest status of it is. What? Where are we with that? Well, they 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 did break it. They did break in and everything, and they were saying that now they are also helping eighty two different low agency uh, agencies around uh, police departments around the country. They're telling them how to break in because those police departments have iPhones that are waiting to be in evidence in cases. Well, I can give you my opinion, but it'll piss off the Apple folks. Yeah, well, that's that. That's fine. I mean, it's it's. It, it, I, I'm sure my opinion is the same. Good for them. Well. Uh, I mean, if they're doing it pursuant to a search warrant, more power to them. If they're not, yeah. then I'm not a big fan. Oh, I'm sure they are doing it with a search Don't warrant. Don't be too sure. Uh, well, I'd like to believe that. Let's there you go. Well, yes, I'd like to believe that. Yeah. But uh, I, it, there's, there are stories that go, they say that they they had access to it. They knew how to break it from day one, but they wanted Apple to give them information that would make it easy to break to any iPhone. Which, if they did it, I don't understand why it's only working for that particular uh, iPhone. It's no, probably that that story changes every yeah. day. Yeah, I don't buy it. We're being spoon fed what they want us to know from both sides of that argument. Yeah, and and uh, I saw did I, I think I sent it in the in the hangout sometime this week. No, there was some some video about this guy who was saying how the media is manipulating public opinion and how they're lying to us. There was somebody from England that was like whistleblower, and then there was a very nice TED talk by Cheryl Atkinson. Atkinson, what's yeah, very very interesting about how companies manipulate. Uh, blogs out there and opinions and how the media is falling for it and how they're using the media to change the way it, it, it's amazing what they do to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cheryl Atkinson, she's an outcast now because she doesn't yeah. agree with the main template. Right. 
she used to be as part of the system, but she, her conscience got to her. Well, listen to this story here. AT&T is asking California taxpayers to give them $100 million so that it can provide several parts of the state with unreliable, slow, and expensive DSL service. Under Assembly Bill 2130, written by an AT&T lobbyist, by AT&T lobbyists, AT&T would receive $100 million from state taxpayer. In return, AT&T would only need to provide 10 megabits download and 1 megabit upload and would have little to no oversight over whether the $100 million is even being used for the DSL service. You want to talk about arrogance? <laughs> Well, what, elaborate. What are you? What are you so offended about? I mean, this stuff happens all the time. You act like it's a big deal. I I, do, I don't understand how the the state would even allow a a, a bill to be introduced. I don't know. Do, do you have? Can anybody introduce a bill? I mean, a, a congressman, a senator, whatever, or it has to go through committees first. No, they can do anything. They can introduce anything they want oh, to, okay. but then the way they they manipulate the system is then, if they want to kill the bill, they'll send it into committee, and the committee never gets around to it. Okay, but people still will have. To, I mean, the the rest of the legislator will have to vote on this. Sure. I I mean, how this is this is ridiculous to a hundred million dollars for DSL. And well, what if that, it's a, but, but, the, but what would Y-Band cost? Two billion? I don't know that it does. I don't know either. I mean, I, I'm not going to get, Yeah. I'm not going to pass judgment on what they're doing unless I know all of the whole story. And, and, and to put in the bill something to the fact that there's no oversight, what they're doing with that money. I mean, I'm a taxpayer. I hope that my legislator, if they decide to give money to some, somebody will, Make sure that there's checks and balances. Uh, well, I you don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. You are so, so, so naive. Uh, pro probably. They just passed a $2 billion bond here in North Carolina that has no oversight. Jeez. Spending like drunk sailors. Not to insult drunk sailors. No. So what happens, Vince? Uh, I had to reset my modem. Oh. Yeah, and it took two tires to get it to come back up. I'd waited for a while and uh, was not getting a um, – I got a receive light, but a send light just stayed blinking. And then finally reset everything. And Interesting. Well, yeah, happened. now it's fine. It's back to normal. Um, Spence, you want to do the specials? Uh, yes. Give I really – I really, we really need to end today at 11 because I need to be – Downtown at noon, and I need to clean the Jeep and all that, so I really want to be able to leave. Before you do specials, didn't you get a new mixer? Yeah. Did you put it in? No. No. Oh. No, no. Uh -uh. I'm not going to do that until you're here. Oh, <clears throat> it'd be interesting. I, uh, I've got to build a new studio. There have been changes in paradise. And for a friend. So what, do you want to use that to see how it works? No, I'm debating whether to buy that same mixer again or whether to do something different. Oh. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Huh? All right. All right. So ready? the specials, let's, let me put it here. Yeah, but you can you can you can go ahead because it's it's it is up there. Okay. Computer Sticker Now specials for all April third, two thousand sixteen. Starting with staples, we've got a, a HP Pavilion i seven laptop. This is a fifteen point six inch machine for five eighty nine. 
That's $180 off. Apple stuff on sale again. You can get an iPad uh, Air 16 gig for $299. That's $100 off. Hmm. Is there trouble in paradise there with the... Uh, you should never see sales on Apple stuff. But uh, Samsung 23.6 inch LED monitor for $129.99, say 50 bucks. We've got a HP Pavilion Core i5 desktop computer for $449.99. That's 150 off. Oh, I put that monitor up there twice. That's what happens when I do this really early. Uh, Logitech K740 wired full size illuminated slim keyboard. $49.99, save $30. Uh, Logitech K400 Plus wireless touch keyboard with built-in glide pad. This is good for multimedia. $24.99, that's $15 off. You can get an HP OfficeJet 7614 wide format all-in-one inkjet printer for $149.99 and save $100. Uh, Western Digital MyCloud, four terabyte personal cloud storage device for $179.99. That's 40 off. Here's a device I hadn't uh, stumbled across yet. Everybody knows what Google Chromecast is. Well, this is Google Chromecast Audio. It's the same, looks like the same kind of a puck, but it is designed specifically to plug into the aux input for speakers, stereo, whatever, and stream to that device easily. It works with both uh, Android and uh, iOS devices for $35. Um, we've also got a deal on a Core i3 laptop, Asus laptop, 15.6 inch for $299.99, which is, uh, how much is it all? 38% off. I found it in their daily deal section, not just in their circular. That's all at Staples. Moving on to Best Buy, they've got a AMD A6 HP laptop for $249.99. And A6 is a true quad core. Uh, good deal there. Samsung Galaxy Tab E7 Lite 8 gig tablet for $99, save $20. Uh, got a Lenovo 100 uh, laptop. This is a Core i5 bundle. Now, I'm not a big fan of bundles because sometimes they give you junk like WebRoot security but it does come with an Office 365 subscription and a thumb drive and a case for $399, an i5 for $399. That's pretty good. Save $129. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0 USB adapter, micro adapter for any device, really, uh, any PC, uh, any form factor, uh, $14.99, say six bucks. They've got the Logitech C920 Pro webcam on sale, five off at $69.99. Uh, Acer Iconia 10.1 inch tablet, 32 gig tablet, a good good amount of storage on there, uh, 129.99, 20 bucks off. Got an HP desktop with an AMD A8 processor in it for 349.99. That's 50 off. HP 23 inch LED monitor for 119.99. That's 60 off. That's probably the best deal today on a 23 inch class monitor. Uh, Seagate four terabyte backup plus USB desktop drive for one nineteen ninety nine save thirty. Um, Epson Epson Workforce this is the thirty six twenty wireless all in one printer for eighty nine ninety nine save eighty dollars. A Canon Image Class wireless uh, black and white laser printer for eighty nine ninety nine that's uh, more than half off save a hundred dollars. And a Brother wireless color desktop scanner. Uh, now, the reason I mention this, it's, it's $229.99 at 70 off, but this comes with uh, high-end features like scan to file, scan to email. Uh, it is wireless, and it says a support, it has web support, and I read all through the description, <clears throat> at least at the, at the uh, Best Buy site. I could not find out what they mean by that, but um, the fact that it is uh, portable wireless for $229.99 and supports uh, some very desirable features makes it a good deal. 70 bucks off. Uh, that's at Best Buy. Going to Office Depot. I spent the entire time at Office Depot today searching through their kind of obscure uh, offerings, not from the circular, just looking at technology and clicking on different uh, uh, categories and searching through there looking for deals. And they've got some interesting stuff. 
Uh, I'm a fan of these uh, USB uh, external dr uh, display devices, whether it's VGA or DVI, or whatever, HDMI. And one thing I just came up this week with my daughter was using one that, that I had given her. It was an ultra brand and couldn't find the driver for it. And I had it on a disc somewhere. This is called the StarTech USB 3.0 VGA USB adapter with on board, on, on board driver installation. How handy is that? So it's got storage on board, so you can just plug it in and use it and load the driver right from the device. Oh, that just makes it so much easier. Right. And the price is good too. It's $49.99, which is $15 off the regular price. Here's another interesting device. It's a, it's a hard, USB 3.0 drive duplicator dock. And it's got two slots in it for copying disks, for cloning disks. You might be interested in this, Amnon, if you create a clone or if you create a, a image to install, like, mm -hmm. for example, your Windows 7 install, you can clone that drive and save it for when you, you install another Skylake i7. Uh, $109.99, that's $25 off the regular price for high-speed so, duplication. So this, is duplication. Of, so this is instead of using any type of cloning software, it's already built in. Built in, yep. apparently. Well, it says USB, so I don't know how you control it. I guess you you have to obviously use a USB connection to power it. It's almost and like it. It looks like it's almost just for two and a half inch, but it, I'm. It, no, it's got both. That little door you see will open. It's got the. Oh, the, oh, the exposed I Exposed slot okay. is for two okay. and a half. It's the same yeah. as my anchor drive that I've got here, where you've got the little uh, door okay. will push down. So. Yeah, I mean, this would be handy if yep. you do a lot of building. Oh, this is another thing, uh, uh, another interesting product. This is from Intel. It's called a Hip Street PC Stick. It's, it has an Atom quad core processor on it. It's meant for plugging into a multimedia device. It's got an HDMI video out to give you a um, multimedia PC connected to your television, for example. But it's got, it comes with the operating system and memory on board. So $129.99, that's $24 off the regular price. If you're always looking for a, a thumb drive to copy something, and I've got all over my desk, all over my office, I have them. And of course, I don't have them labeled. Centon USB flash drive, to eight gig each, pack of 10 for 50 bucks. So it's uh, that's five some about five dollars a piece. That's nice. Do you know what's missing on this? Somebody should what? come up with some kind of uh, like a Pez di dispenser. <laughs> yeah, you press the button and it pops out. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if if you do a lot of uh, just moving around the files and yeah. temporary backups and things, it's interesting. Uh, the next device. This is interesting. I. I I had been in part of a lab set up years ago. We were testing what they call thin clients. And thin clients are a way of hooking up a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to a make it, it looks like a PC, but it loads its operating system over the network. There typically is not a hard drive on board. There might be some flash memory to get it started on the network, but it loads its operating system remotely. And what this is, and Wise is a big maker. Dell bought them years ago. Wise makes a lot of different types of either th what they call thin clients. In this case, it's a zero client, which means it has nothing on board. It loads everything over the network, and it works specifically with the Microsoft multipoint server, which is designed for educational environments. It says specifically for school systems or educational environments where you can't afford to give every student a PC. Well, not only, I mean, that, the PCs are not that expensive, but I can understand from a support perspective, how do you support hundreds of inexpensive laptops or, or desktop computers? This would be a very simple way to roll out PC access, controlled PC access to multiple students using this device. You plug in a keyboard, a mouse, monitor, sound, so on. $58 each, but it must work with the Microsoft multipoint server. So if you're interested, you have that type of environment, take a look at it. And finally, this is one of many devices that are out there. This just happens to be one of the uh, more friendly ones. There's, there's tons of versions of this. Just a simple KVM switch. This one doesn't look like it supports audio, 
Uh, maybe it does. It just might just show the cable. Some have the cables built in. Audio is not really that important for KVM. No, it's, it's not. Speakers. It depends on the circumstances. Yeah. But I have lots of KVM switches. I still use them all the time. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have older ones in boxes I really need to give away. But some of them very simple. This, is, this has got all the cords are all built in. Uh, very simple way of sharing monitor, keyboard, and mouse across, mm -hmm. in this case, two PCs. So handy, 39 bucks. That's at uh, CompUSA, uh, no, sorry, not CompUSA, gosh. Uh, uh, Office Max, Office Depot, Office Max. And finally, Fry's. Again, I went to look at some more unusual things. Uh, CyberPower 450 VA battery backup unit for $34.99. That's 10 off. This is the kind you really want to use with your uh However, your service is delivered to your house, your cable modem, your wireless router, maybe your uh, terminal adapter for your voice over IP service. Uh, good way to protect it, keep it up in case of momentary outages. Um, good price. And they've got a, a fairly large one here for a good price, APC, a 1080 VA battery backup unit for $124.99, which is $25 off. Good deal there. If you've lost the remote for your car, the keyless entry remote, and you want an inexpensive way of replacing it, here is a generic universal remote that you can add for $19.99, 10 off. Now, I would check to make sure that your, your particular vehicle is supported. It says uh, top 20 most popular vehicles, top 20 most major car brands. I might try this for my daughter. She lost her remote for her Honda. I'll see if it will work, but hey, Check it out. Inexpensive way instead of going to the dealer and paying 150 bucks for a new remote. Um, interesting device here, the Sonic from Motorola in-car wireless speakerphone. And it works uh, with uh, Bluetooth, connects to two phones simultaneously and gives you, instead of, well, you've got an older car that doesn't have Bluetooth. I just went to the expense of upgrading the radios in the two cars that I drive, my work vehicle and my my regular runaround vehicle, I put in Bluetooth radios. They're reasonable, but you can spend $100 each for a good one and you got to install it. Uh, this is an inexpensive way to take with you from car to car, uh, hands-free Bluetooth uh, calling, hands-free calling and speakerphone capability, especially now with uh, uh, many states having hands-free laws and uh, some imminent laws coming like in North Carolina, they're talking about banning. Uh, all calls except hands-free calls. So $49.99, 10 off. Uh, good deal on a uh, specialty cable here. If you don't like carrying around a lot of cables to support your wireless devices. So this one is, has actually got, it. it's built in micro USB with a lightning adapter on the end of it for $9.99. That's 10 off, so half price. Uh, great to throw it in the car if you have a car charger set up and you have multiple technology phones. Uh, this is a, an interesting device here, the uh, Incipio Command Wireless Smart Outlet with metering. I thought the price point was really good here. If in fact you don't need anything else special, any hub or anything like that, it says it works with Wi-Fi. You can download an app uh, to control this, uh, what is essentially an, an AC switch, but it has other features. So you can actually set up and program changes, control the control it on the fly, but also do programmable changes to devices connected to this. Uh, Ten off, it's uh, twenty nine ninety nine. What shoot, I like about it is I, shows energy usage. Yeah, but shoot, I thought it was I thought it was something. I thought it was a wireless outlet. That's what I wanted to AC outlet. What do you mean uh, wireless power? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so deliver, I need power out by the pool, so I just put this out there and it delivers Wireless power smart outlet. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. That uh, power over power over Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got that's the million dollar technology I'm on. We need to work on that. <laughs> and finally, uh, Gearhead for a while it was hard to find powered USB 3.0 hubs cheap. They were really expensive. Remember when they first came out, Amnon? You, you just oh, hard yeah, to find but... them. You could find lots of passive ones, but the but the powered ones were, were relatively expensive. 
Here's one for uh, 1999 is half price, $20 off. Uh, you a four port USB 3.0 with AC adapter. That's critical. You don't want to be bus powered for devices that draw a lot of power. Right. So good deal on that. This is all at Fry's. And that's it Fry's. for the Computers TK Now specials for April 3rd, 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 919-518-9773. Computers TK Voice on Skype. And I'm, I'm not saying we should do the picks, but I did uh, personal picks, but I did buy a GoPro knockoff camera and I will report back. I will not be around the next couple of weeks because I'm, we're going on an extended trip and I'll be out of the country. Uh, but so I, I, I'm not sure what kind of internet access I'll have, but so I bought, what's that? You're going to use it before, I mean, are you going to take it and rely on it? Take video? No, I'm, well, it's, I'm taking a regular good digital SLR okay. with me for pictures, but okay. I'm using this. It's a, it's a knockoff GoPro. I paid $75 for it on Amazon. It's called a, of all names, tech T E C dot bean B E A N where they get that name. I don't know, but it is a equivalent to the, uh, not the very latest GoPro. It doesn't do 4k, but it does 1080p. It does what I wanted it for was for time-lapse photography. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to take, we're going through the Panama Canal and I want to set it up on I the balcony and have it just record that trip through the through Panama the canal. canal. You want to take uh, my GoPro with you? No, I, I, I got this. I got this new one. I bought I a knockoff. Back up in case it doesn't do what you want. That's true. Yeah. Might be good. Yeah. yeah I just, you know, I, I set it up last night to test it, to see how well it would work. The, 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 the document, I haven't looked at it yet. I let it run. I just let it run until the battery went dead. I want to see how much it would record. Um, but the, 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 the only negative to this is that the documentation is almost non-existent. So you have to kind of grope through um, configuring it. But so far I've used it to record video. I've used it to play around with uh, the, the application that comes with the phone is decent. Mm -hmm. uh, it does support Wi-Fi. Um, so, hey, for 70 bucks, 75 bucks. Yeah. It's pretty good. It does support up to 32 gig micro flash. Um, I bought two cards for it. So, yeah, I'll let you know, Mike. I'm going to play with it before we go. We leave Thursday night. So, yeah, uh, but it came with it came with the waterproof case, a bunch of attachments. Talk so, about uh, no no uh, manual. I, I upgraded the uh, Omar's surveillance system and got a a card on eBay that for eight cameras, two hundred and forty frames. So that gives you thirty per camera, which is good. Nice software. And and a translated uh, the uh, manual. Only problem is the manual is like three or four versions back. Oh. It doesn't mm. correspond. And I wrote the seller and I said, what's going? He said, yes, yeah. they, they didn't update it. So, I mean, it's ridiculous to send it back and, you know, to papers. So it works great, but it took so long to figure out, okay, let's try this. No, let's try that. Uh, let's try. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So it's, um, uh, it's interesting, but you were talking about 4K, you guys, Mike, you too. But uh, so Sony launched its 4K movie streaming. All right, no, is launching it called Ultra on the fourth. Consumers will be able to buy movies from the service and stream to support its Sony 4K TV sets. The new service will offer 4K HDR movies to stream, including extras that have previously been able only previously been able only on physical discs. Ultra ties into Ultraviolet, the cloud locker service backed by Sony. Here comes the interesting part. Consumers will be able to upgrade SD and HD quality movies from their ultra violet cloud locker for $12 to $15 respectively. 
they I don't know why it didn't catch the other part of this. I may have deleted it. Each movie is gonna be like thirty bucks to rent. Thirty wow to rent. Wow. Like on demand. Well, Amazing. You know, just it so all you depends can... if if that's if you have a four K TV and you're uh, gotta have it. You yeah, gotta pay for have it. it. Right. But that doesn't include having to upgrade your uh, um, internet service. What's the what's yeah. the data data rate for four K <laughs> streaming? Four times of ten eighty i ten eighty p. Interesting. It, it, this one is interesting article, but I didn't understand what's the big deal about it. researchers. Researchers at MIT want to change how we connect to Wi-Fi to avoid the cumbersome network logging process. A team has come up with a way to grant computer access to Wi-Fi based on their proximity to a router. Applied practically, that means you could walk into a cafe and your device would automatically connect to a network. No annoying password necessary or any of that. The same could be true for home network. I, I thought that's how it works right now anyway. When your friends come over, they could immediately be granted process access to your Wi-Fi. I thought that's how it works right any uh, right now anyway. Of course, when you don't have a password. The paper sadly does not offer details on the security aspect. Security researchers advise that one should be careful when connecting to a public Wi-Fi. Say you forget to turn off Wi-Fi on your device and you walk into a cafe. Your phone will automatically establish a connection with this supposed network. And if the network is compromised, plenty of devices will be exposed to an attack. So. If you don't have a password, it will connect automatically anyway. So what did they do here? I couldn't figure out, but I just thought it's interesting that they're trying to come up with a way to bypass a uh, password. We just have to wait and see if they have, if they worked something in it. Maybe there'll be an update about it, about how to, to get, uh, how to be secured when this happens. Nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three computers two K voice on Skype. Intel is dumping NVIDIA for licensing deal with AMD. Apparently they everything that we're using today with Intel is actually NVIDIA. I didn't know that. Uh, but uh, they are their agreement with NVIDIA expires March 17, 2017. And they were saying that they're talking with AMD about Radeon. No. Um, and for those of you that think that things are not being saved out there, an Illinois prosecutor announced Friday that a Seattle man was wrongly convicted in 2012 of the abduction and murder of a seven-year-old girl in 1957. Reports are coming from the Seattle Times. It was believed to be the nation's oldest cold case, but a reader raises an interesting concern. He finally got an alibi. The, the convict got an alibi which was a telephone call which he made in 1957. While it surely is a good thing that an innocent innocence has been proven, the case is also an evidence that America's communication records are retained infinitely. I mean, we're talking before digital stuff. What, Mike, you think somebody was sitting somewhere with a reel-to-reel -reel and... Uh, <laughs> recording all the calls what so i didn't understand what the exculpatory evidence was 
that he had an alibi which was a phone call that he made in 1957. Maybe he made that call during that time when they said that he did it or whatever. They did not get into it, but he was exonerated. Because, well, I, I because think he, there was a recording of that phone call. Yeah, he probably should have found it a little quicker. Yeah, but I mean, never mind all this. 1957 recording phone calls of people just like out of oh. nowhere. I, I, I mean, it's an interesting story superficially. It'd be yeah. interesting to know what the details are. There are a lot of people in prison who don't, who are not guilty. All of them are. No, all of them say they are not guilty, that's, that's but all of them I mean, are not, I mean, yeah. not guilty. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but there are some, there are some innocent people in prison. Now, listen to this here. This is an interesting loophole in some system. Telemarketers in Canada and the USA have essentially been bypassing each nation's do not call registry by basing their efforts from the other or from offshore locations. Apparently, if you are signing to a do not call list, it only applies to companies that are in the United States. I didn't know that. But, of course, they can't control it from outside. Um, while cross-border spam remaining rampant, now the CRTC, Canada Telecom and Broadcast Regulator, has announced it is... It signed a partnership agreement with the Federal Trade Commission of the United States to fight against spam and calls from pesky telemarketers. The Memorandum of Understanding consists of all unsolicited telecommunications, unsolicited commercial email, which is spam, and other illegal electronic threats that cover anti-spam laws in the United States and Canada. So they could they could do from Canada to the United States, and the, for the Canadians, they would be based in the United States and call into Canada. Smart. But apparently they are putting an end to it. Maybe it'll help all of us. Right. I noticed that there's one credit card rate reduction scam that's using or spoofing cell phone numbers. So you'll see a call come oh, yeah. in from yep. a local oh. number with a with a, a an exchange that's a cell phone number. You say, oh, that's a cell phone number. And I have a small business and I sometimes get calls from people. If I don't know the number, typically I'll let it ring and just tell if it's gonna if they want to talk to me, they'll leave a voicemail. But the other day I answered one and it was that recording. This is not an alert about your credit card, but if you'd like <laughs> to lower your rate. Yeah, but Uma works really good. Yes, it does, but I I can't I have I don't have the premium service, so I can't get oh, the yeah. call screening. I pay. Well, I don't the problem pay that. I'm having is on my cell phone. I get two or three of those a day. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer it. Yeah, it's the only thing you can do. I don't know if any service. And it I used to blacklist them with the, with the program that loaded but i mean they the numbers are just like randomly generated something needs to change in the telecommunication system that allows you to spoof telephone numbers like that or even to get these because i mean you think about what's happening and this is something i really don't understand when these scammers spoof those local telephone numbers they'll keep the number for probably a week or two weeks and then they'll move on to the next one and call the next call you right. again then at some point you go in, you get a new telephone number. They're assigning you that number. They're tainting all of these numbers for future use. Yeah. Think how many people, if you picked up this number, this 413, low 919 413 number that somebody used to call you yeah. to harass you and to spam you, then all of a sudden, uh, three months later, you get that number and you try to call people and you can't cause it's blocked. And because Uma blocks you and all this stuff, it's crazy. Good. Good so point. are they are they actually spoofing in some cases numbers well, that are assigned to people? Th they're spoofing them, but they are also getting these numbers. Like you could go, you used to be able to go to Google Voice and say, "Hey, I need a number," and they'd give you a number. 
But then once that number becomes useless or people are on to you, such as if you go to 1-800-NOTES.COM or whatever these sites are where they say, this number just called me, when it gets to the point that they're getting a low connect rate because these numbers have been detected, they abandon that number and sign up for a new one and start all over again. If well, they to, abandon that a number for three to six months, then it's going to be reassigned. Well, to spoof, spoof a number, you don't have to have that legally have that number. No, right. not at all. All you're doing is changing the caller but, ID information. But, the, but so, that's illegal. That's, yeah, the yeah, yeah well, illegal. it's already illegal to call. So yeah, but care. the point what Mike is trying to make here is that you see that number and you blacklist it. Oh, no, I get what you're saying. See that I'm number. Saying it could be. It doesn't necessarily mean that they they go and get that number and then they abuse it and then move on. They can use your phone yeah. number. Yeah, but they're still using that number. Yeah, it's just like I mean the same thing happens with spam. I mean IPs are being used for spamming, like from Time Warner or from AT and T, and get added to all type of uh, blacklists, and then somebody happens to inherit them when their IP changed and suddenly you find yourself in a, in a boat that can't go anywhere. And yet that happens start. all the time. Yeah. When they, I'm always in a boat that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Dr. John says he's received calls that shows his own number. <laughs> hey, I'm calling myself from the future. What am I trying to tell myself? In Google now, on uh, Tuesday, announce fiber phone. So if you if you have Google Fiber, a home phone service for fiber subscribers, ten dollars a month. Fiber phone offers unlimited local and nationwide calling, and the same affordable rates as Google Voice for international calls. Oh, the calls sound better because they're fiber. They could. They probably are sounding better than Google. Well, Voice. but what good yeah. is it? I mean, how many, what percentage of right. people have access I, to Google Fiber? Well, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a marketing term they're using now because yeah. who cares what the connection is? It's pipe dream. I mean, they yeah. just, Google just get rid of their Google wallet card. They, they just cut stuff out all the time whenever they don't get a good run out of it. I mean, if they if they spread out real as fast as they would like to, it it'll be nice. It's cheap. Well, it it is now, but I mean, yeah. Google Google <clears throat> is like every other company; they get their priorities out of order from time to time, and like every so, other company. Well, they seem to be worse because they're the gorilla. They've got the power to do what they want to do, and they're sticking their nose into things that are none of their business. So they, uh, they're really pissed off that North Carolina does not want to do away with men's and women's bathrooms. And so they're threatening the state. You know, what's funny about that is that the same thing happened in Houston, but do you see the out, out, the outrage at Texas and Houston over it? No, no. And, and it's strange because we don't want to get too deep into this, but they just had a big ball game down in Houston and all these people complaining, went to the game. They went to Houston. Uh, exactly. So where it's, it's hypocrites. I, I had, well, I'm not going to get into it. Sorry. So anyway, I don't like when these companies start sticking their nose into things and they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, it, it really, it's discouraging. We are all uh, fans of CNBC here, right? Oh, yes. We all love CNBC. We love them. An article published by CNBC on Tuesday offered tips on how to create a secure password, complete with a form that tested submitted password. While well-intended, Security experts said it exposed password to third-party advertisers. Also, the form created to test a password didn't use SSL or TLS, which meant someone on the same network could have sniffed it. Even worse, the tool claimed to not store the password, but an acute observer found 
they were actually being inputted into a Google Docs spreadsheet. <laughs> CNBC quickly withdrew the article. What, why people like that even get into this type of uh... naive, either naive or doing it for other reasons. Uh, I believe there's still a lot of very naive people out there that just don't yeah. either understand the background or it's uh, have no historical context or just trust people too much. Yeah. And uh, internet and bandwidth again. Following a report from DSL Reports that AT&T would be imposing usage caps on the company's Uverse broadband customers, AT&T has announced it would now be following Comcast's lead by, quote-unquote, allowing users to pay $30 more a month if they want to avoid usage caps entirely. However, AT&T has taken it to a new level by allowing users to graciously avoid the $30 fee if they subscribe to DirecTV or Uverse TV service. These data caps allow ISPs like AT&T and Comcast to cash in on internet video and make cord cutting less viable by making streaming more expensive. And now AT&T is using the caps to force user to subscribe to traditional TV if they want their broadband connection to work like it used to. Mike, did you ever find out about Uvers, what kind of caps, and if they can actually have the mechanism to, to do it at this point? The cap for, for what I have, the gigapower, is rumored to be one terabyte. But a guy over in Apex who has since dumped Gigapower and gone back to Time Warner yeah. was regularly doing two to three terabytes a month, and they never said anything to him. And please do tell, why did he drop them and go back to? Uh, because the service is not what it's claimed to be. They it, claim it's one gigabit up and down. Yeah. And the reality is that the only place you can get one gigabit up and down is communicating with another AT&T server on the same network. Um, if I do a speed test now, I get 600 down, 200 up. Yeah. And I'm not technically competent enough to explain what I'm getting ready to say. But even people say, oh, what a first world problem. Woe is me. Why are you whining about 200 megabit up? Because I can't tell the difference between 200 megabit up and 20 megabit up on on time warner it's not a good quality connection if that makes any sense even though the ping times are there and what have you and what this guy over in apex who is a real techie said he said they're choking it they're they're absolutely choking it he said that they uh he he knows about all of the good stuff that uh goes into the background and making these things happen and he said that it's just it's more marketing than it is technical accomplishment and i, I and i and i have to agree with that because you will see, for example, even even on Time Warner, it says download a, a an HD movie in 3.2 seconds. <clears throat> well, that ain't so because no. the servers can't supply it to you that fast. It, right. They're just not out there. You might hit one in a hundred that allows you to do that, but what good is that? That's what it. What if we said one in a hundred airplanes you get on is going to land safely? <laughs> Yeah, I mean it. It's it's true. Um, with with Time Warner now, the only place that I get really full speed from all other places is Clinton, Clinton, North Carolina. Mm. Every place else is it's below two hundred. Did you try so, the DSL reports speed test? No. If you go to dslreports.com, they have a speed test and it's a really nice speed test. And, but, but there have been some, some guys who in, in their forums where I was posting quite a bit at one point who, for example, one guy attacked me saying, oh no, 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 that's all. 
He, he said DSL reports uses crappy peering and crappy servers and AT&T has the most peering here and da, 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 da. And somebody who knows more than I do came back in and attacked him, told him he didn't know what he was talking about. And I said, why do we get lousy speed tests outside of the AT&T network? Google gets excellent speed tests throughout the net. Well, no, that's not true. Google doesn't hold a candle to AT&T. Why don't you show me a link with some bad, uh, I mean, some good Google fiber tests. So I provide him with him with one. He's disappeared. Mm -hmm. It's right. just, a, it's just, everything's a scam anymore. seems to be, unfortunately. Well, don't confuse, uh, reality with selling. Yeah. I used to have salespeople tell me that. I said, don't get into the weeds with this customer talking about real stuff. Just tell them what the product brief says. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the point is that dealing with AT&T is no better than dealing with <clears throat> Time Warner. Um, you can save a little bit of money going back to, to 200 slash 20 with Time Warner versus 600 slash 200 on AT&T also referred to as gigapower. I mean, it's just, it's just aggravating. Sell reports now. I like their tool. Uh Oh, actually pretty good. You like what? I like their speed test tool. Oh yeah. Uh, but if, if, and, and what's so bizarre about the AT&T thing is that there's some guys over in apex who are getting full speed tests outside the AT&T network, but I can't, it's almost like my account has been flagged because I'm obviously one of the earlier accounts. And every time you try to ask a question about speed test, uh, they want to all talk about, oh, your neighbors are slowing you down and all that crap. They used to blame on Time Warner all the time, which wasn't true. It really was equipment. I mean, I, Time Warner had so much more bandwidth than people were using mm -hmm. that whenever these things were nailed down, they ultimately determined that it was a problem with a, a I don't even know what the, were the routers or the ports or something the, at some the point. The node. The node. That's what yeah. I was trying to think of. Yeah. And there's Eileen. Um, it's, it, what kind of speed do you get when you're connecting to their preferred server? I mean, 950, 950. What good is it? Yeah, I know. I know. I could fly to the moon if I had a rocket. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> um, be, before we end, I want to mention something for everybody who is local here. Um, there is a there is a uh, play that's going to be performed today at the museum. What is it? Which museum is it? Dang it! The one right across from the Capitol. It's a history museum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it is. It's. It's. It's 50 years since the United States got out of Vietnam. So it's a, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, event. And that's where I was yesterday displaying the deuce, and there were helicopters there, and there's going to be some helicopters there today too. Uh, but the, the, uh, the play, it's not a play play like what you would think. It's... The, the name of it is Etchings in Stone, and it's uh, the audience is like the wall, the Vietnam Wall in D.C., looking out at people who are coming, uh, mem family members and friends, and, and what they are saying to the wall, to their people that they lost. And it, it's really moving even for somebody who wasn't here back then it's it's free so if you want, i mean the kids love out there you know with the, the helicopters and with the vehicles and but then to the, the adults should really go and see that it's at two o'clock the um the play today is it is at two o'clock the display outside is from 12 till 4. Um, I just wanted to mention it, and if anybody local listening to us and would be interested. Next. Next, I have uh, a friend who is a helicopter pilot, since you mentioned helicopters. Yeah. 
he flies medical helicopters. He does the evacuations, the picks up, pickups, transports, those sorts of things. It was an interesting conversation I had with him not too long ago. I haven't mentioned it before now. And I, I was asking him some some, I guess, insider type questions. And I said, what are, are you really providing? And, and you have to know the context of the conversation. Are you really providing a service to these patients? Because the reason I asked the question is 30 years ago, uh, in many cases, particularly at hospitals in small towns, whenever the hospital would ask for someone to be transported to another hospital it's because they didn't want their fatality numbers going up and <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, this is not arguable. This is well known. It's just the way it worked. And what yeah. would happen is that if you had a family member who was in a car wreck and they said, well, we can't help him here. We've got to transfer him to Moore County. That usually was a kiss of death because they really, there was not a lot that they could do. And, and more often than not, they would pass away before, before long, many times during the transport. Well, I hadn't thought about that issue in quite a long time. So I was asking him, I said, how are things working for you? I said, how often do you have to deal with someone not making the, the making it through the transport? He said, never. He said, we've got enough technology and expertise now. He said, he said, we can almost always keep them alive from the time they're in the helicopter till the time they get to the operating table or where they're going. He said, now there are procedures in place. He said, sometimes we keep people alive who have no business being alive, but that's not our choice. That's not our, that's not for us to call. It's our job to do the absolute best that we can. And he said, almost never do we lose, do he, they call it coding. Almost never does anyone code in the back. He said over 10 or 15 years, he had had it happen twice. And I said, well, then let me ask you in the next question. I said, what about the as as far as the net outcome when you transport people are these are these people actually getting better care are they getting the benefit of a transport or are you transporting them to to get rid of them he said no he said you'll be amazed at what has happened he said <clears throat> because of the availability <clears throat> of rapid transport he said there are certain specialists throughout our our the area we serve that if someone has a particular problem such as a, let's say a stroke there is a specialist within traveling distance that if they get this patient to that specialist, their, their, uh, their, uh, outlook improves dramatically over what it would be if they even had a specialist, uh, of, of, of not the same background in the local hospital. And he, he said, it's just, <clears throat> it's very rewarding to see what benefit they're getting by being able to do some of these transports. And he said, there's, there's even more to it. He said, there are with certainly with hospitals in the past being under major budget consideration, there are certain types of equipment that are very expensive. And he said that he has been called into action to pick up a piece of equipment, <clears throat> excuse me, at a hospital and transport it to a smaller hospital mm -hmm. where they don't have that equipment, but they have an immediate need. Uh, it was just fascinating to hear how he does it. He, he, he would do he, he, the airport he works from, he's sitting there waiting for a call. He gets the call. He's in the air. He's at the hospital in less than, less than 10 minutes. And he lands on the heliport hot. I mean, the engine's still cranked up and ready to go. They're sitting there with the equipment, ready to load it into the helicopter. Boom, throw it in there. He's gone in, in just a minute. And he could, <laughs> excuse me, can travel to almost any hospital he needs to go to within 30 minutes. So he said on average, from the time he gets a call until that piece of equipment is in the doctor's hands is about 50 minutes. Yeah. There was also a, a story on the news this week about the costs of these. I, don't know I asked him about that. And, and I said, what, what do you see for costs? He said, well, he, obviously he's not in on that, but he yeah. said that it's anywhere from five to $20,000. Yeah. And I said, why the variance? And he said, the only thing he could tell is that many times the, when the bill comes out, it lumps, not only the transport, but the medical care given during the transport. And often it will reclude include the receiving or care given at the hospital, the transferring hospital. He said, a lot of these he, he said, now he, he, he's not in billing, so he doesn't know. He's just guessing. Yeah. He said in his opinion that a lot of what's happening is that there's some sloppy billing going on 
and a lot of things are lumped into a single bill. Somebody opens it and says, wow, $20,000. And if it's itemized, you realize that maybe 5,000 of it was the transport. The problem with the transport is that some insurance companies, if not most, don't cover it. Right. And that, that was one of the problems, yeah. All right. Spence, are you frozen or you are? Oh, no. Okay. Well, 11 o'clock. Yep, time to go. Time to go. Thanks, everybody. Any last words, Mike, Spence? Uh, no. Well, right, one go, quick question. I'll I've got a, a friend whose small business is going to replace four desktop computers. And I'm curious what he should get. I'm thinking Lenovo. Lenovo is a great computer. Absolutely. I, I tend to agree. All right. Especially for a business. Yep. Good support. Good hardware. Yep. Built in Chinese translation. Yep. Built in spyware, built in <laughs> everything yeah, is no. no. That's it's, that's only the non ThinkPad laptops. Yeah, that's right. Well, but I'll nice see everybody. Anyway. See everybody, and uh, I won't be here next week or the week after, but I'll should be here the week after that. No, you so, have to log in from the Panama Canal. I'm not logging in from the ship and paying that whatever it is a minute to use the internet. <laughs> Just money. Yeah. <laughs> Will you guys cover the cost for me? Amnon, will the show cover the cost for me? Amnon will me? give you his credit card. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That was good. I'll, if I can get to, yeah, don't forget to take DEET. I have yeah, mili military grade, 100% DEET. <laughs> stuff that you gave me, Amnon, that I yeah. doctor the store bought stuff with. Yeah. yeah. But um, I will attempt to, when we're at uh, ports, well, actually, it's it's a fifteen day cruise and eight days at sea, so you're gonna uh, have fun. You're gonna have fun. Oh no, this was this was our since I worked in Alaska last year. The second year you work there, you get a free cruise, and it's any cruise that they have in the world as long as there's availability on it. Doesn't matter how long it is; they don't restrict the length. So we applied for this one, and uh, we applied for three, and this is the one we got, and we we're thrilled about it. So, when do you leave? We leave Friday, next Friday. We fly out of here Thursday night for Los Angeles, and we sail from Los Angeles through the canal to Fort Lauderdale. Okay. All right, guys. Nice. Thanks, right. everybody, on Blab. Yeah, thanks, everybody. If anybody wants to keep Blab. it and keep it going, let us know. And thanks, everybody, in our chat. But that's it for today. Good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac. Norm, Katie and Donna, thank you everybody for tuning to Computers 2K now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing, back up your hard drive, and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at Computers2KNow.com. And while you're at it, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, Tonight, it's uh, Tanya Love Show. Tomorrow, it's Breaking Free. And if you are not listening to Howard at 2.30 on uh, Triangle Be Well, make a point of doing it. Very interesting information about health and wellness. Bye, everybody. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brock, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Parent Dome with Ryan Miller, Current Affairs with Omnon Nissan. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. 
Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.